，一路誒、um, ，what have they done to OBS？ 是。Let's do this. Let's try to um, sketch something out. Why is it this stupid? What is this studio mode? I don't want studio mode. Ah, yes. Okay, back to normal. Faceless purifier. That topic again? Cool. I like it. Faceless purifier. All right, this is topic number uno. Any other suggestions? Hey, Zelen. What's good? Wasteland battle nun. <laughs> what? Wicked. Hey, Pa Cobra. How's it going? P A Cobra. Public announcement Cobra. Elf fire mechanic. Uh, elf fire mechanic. That's interesting. All oh, right, six more Marcos. Yeah. <laughs> elf fire mechanic got definitely technical. Um, so we got faceless purifier, wasteland battle nun, elf fire mechanic. Castle Breaker. That's pretty cool. We got four topics. What's a Castle Breaker? That's interesting. All right, I'm going to start. If there is any more topics being suggested, they're going to drop in. Uh, but other than that, five and six uh, is a reroll. Hey, dear Bard, how's it going? Fuxia, how's it going? Throw in some topics, quick, quick. Throw in a topic, <laughs> and we'll we'll sort it out. Gonna roll, and if it's oh, it's number two, anyways, which is wasteland battle nun. Pretty cool. All right, wasteland battle nun is it is wasteland battle battle. None. Battle none. Battle none. I mean, it can't be one word, right? Battle none. It has to be a battle none. Warhorse is one word. Lava priestess is a cool topic. I agree. Okay, wasteland battle nun. Okay, I had a picture instantly when I had to paint the topic. I got a picture in my head. A wasteland picture. So what I'll do is I'll quickly sketch it out. And uh, we'll see, I'm going to try this sketching technique again. Um, and we'll see how it will end today when I have actually two hands to paint with. Uh, but I'm going to try to, again, layer the, um, layer the image. In an organized way, but I'm gonna be using um, uh, I'm gonna be using 
not the hard brush. But I'm going to be using a textured brush. And the picture in my head was this battle nun with kind of like uh, wasteland, uh, wasteland gear standing and having her um, like gown flying in the wind and she's shooting towards the camera a bit. Like that's the picture I had in my mind. Hey Morphia, how's it going? Welcome back. Hey Gria, how's it going? So that's that's the picture in my head when I when I had to draw this topic, I I accepted like I, I had to get a picture right, search for a picture in my mind, and that that's what kind of popped out. This kind of low camera angle of the battle nun. Uh, standing up and and shooting with some sort of gas mask and some sort of post apocalyptic gear hey Rooney how's it going So I'm going to try this sketching technique now, where I, where I will make decision decisions with overlay switched on. So you can see I've locked the layer. You press Alt and click the space in between layers, and you can lock to the layer. And uh, I've locked overlay to this layer. And what's cool with like like uh, locking uh, layers. For example, if, if the, the none layer, layer 2 over there, would be multiply and I would add a layer to lock a layer to that, I would paint on the multiply effect, which is interesting. Hey Miguel, how's it going? I think, yeah, um, Warhammer. They have uh, have created a really cool uh, world. If you don't know, there's a documentary about um, Games Workshop. Uh, but uh, for you who are fans, you probably have uh, watched it already. But for those who don't know, there is a Warhammer uh, documentary about the studio and how they almost closed their doors and how they like battled through. Uh, tough times. It was really interesting to hear how they, how it's like, um, it was two friends who set up Games Workshop. Very. Hey, Sharsta, how's it going? The Genesis. Yeah, I think uh, Rollomancer uh, suggested it also due to six more Marco or six more vodkas um, art drop yesterday. What they did yesterday, for those who don't know, is that they um, they released the Genesis, the whole package, uh, for free. And in that package is buttload of art and story and website experience and uh, I mean the Genesis itself is amazing in, in terms of visuals it's very Marco heavy and they have worked on this uh, this world for uh, quite some time and it's really cool to see them releasing it like a big old bundle for everyone to enjoy.
Sure, so, oh, a few of your friends played the Genesis? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is definitely very impressive. It's not the... Uh, it's not bad at all, you know. <laughs> I guess those those kids can draw. <laughs> hey, Amir, how's it going? How are you? Uh, <coughs> Gria, yeah, it's a board game. It's like an RPG board game. <laughs> I remember um I remember in 2004 I went to my first uh workshop and in that workshop there was like 30 people uh, attendees and then Marco Jason Manley, uh, Android, Andrew Jones. Those were the only three on the first workshop I w went to. It was really, really cool. It was definitely like an eye-opener. Or it may, maybe uh, Coro Kaufman was there as well, Justin Kaufman. Um, Art director now at uh, Massive Black, I think. But it was a uh, really cool in experience, and, and uh, the scale of the workshop was so small and intimate that it was really, it was a, like an eye opener um, in terms of getting a glimpse into the world of it right of the what requ was is what is required where the skill level is you know where the roof is if you want to get hired you have to be able to do x y and z and so on and then at that time it was absolutely i was absolutely floored by it you know And all I did was I went there with my sketchbook and just sat there and was amazed. But also, I was very strange. <laughs> my fo first exposure to the outside world, more or less. But I've already had met online uh, Andrew Jones. I had worked with him on an indie project for like a, two, a year already. So I, I knew him-ish. Uh, so it was really nice to meet him in person, seeing his kick-ass art that he contributed to the indie project. And then it was my first exposure to Marko Djurjevic, which was mind-boggling. His level of, of understanding of posing and anatomy was like, how is this, <laughs> how is this possible? I think if you have an opportunity to go to a workshop, uh, it is mandatory. If you are if you are interested in this industry, um, if you want to work in this industry, you have to go to a workshop. It is is just that it's a fact. If you never go to an one of these workshops um, I would say you would only have a vague understanding of multiple things right 
Uh, one of the things that you, you would only have a vague understanding of is the skill level required to work in the industry. There's one thing to go on an art station profile, like, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't care, right? You just have a glance. That's cool. There's another thing of meeting that artist, looking at their work, looking at their sketchbook, or looking at their portfolio as a whole, you know, and seeing what they actually can do, seeing what they actually, you know, their skill level and so on. And the same applies, of course. Anything I say now is, of course, in, re in reverse, because you are also there, right? And people see your stuff and they understand what you can do and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, and another thing that's really important is that you'll see the, the working seasonal professionals, seasoned professionals, mind you, not seasonal, <laughs> seasoned professionals, those old alpha gorillas, you know, that's been around uh, for a long time and knows the ins and outs of their trade and their really understanding of what, you know, they, they know, right? And if, if you never see that upper echelon, uh, what they produce in, in real life, you know, seeing their portfolio or looking at their uh, sketchbook or hearing them talk and understanding that, okay, this is the, this is like end game stuff, right? That's where, where hopefully you can end up um, one day if you keep at it and you can you you will never really understand that for me at least how it was you are almost like in a bubble at your home looking at internet and going wow these are really good art but you get so saturated by it you get so blind by it but it's a completely different thing going to a workshop, experiencing all of that in a package and the, the inspiration you get from it and the, the, the boost in, in everything you get from just being there and being exposed to this level is uh, you can't it's uh, you can't compare it and luckily nowadays there are a lot of these workshops so it's not that hard to get a hold of and uh, or get into rather and for me it every workshop before I became a jaded veteran <laughs> it was always amazing Um, so Gria, let me try to explain these workshops, right? How they, how they usually pan out. So usually, what what how they are set up is that there is uh, lectures that you can go and listen. Um, I think workshops in a lot of workshops are actually a bit of a misleading um, term because there's actually no workshopping being done in its true sense in in that you're actually doing job and someone is pushing and giving you feedback at what you're doing and and pushing you in the right direction and hands-on you know th there's no uh, workshopping like that right that, that but what happens is that there's a bunch of lectures 
Um, there's panels, meaning that uh, there's uh, they gather maybe eight professionals. They're sitting in front of everyone and uh, they talk about topics. You can ask questions. And usually the panels have a topic of discussion like mental health, right? Firestarter, they, um, they released their latest uh, TAD talk uh, panel about mental health. And they're sitting there discussing, you know, like what's important, their experiences and so on and so on. So in other, in other times, in other workshops, there are sculptors who are actually sitting and sculpting. Um, at uh, TAD, they actually had paint over sessions. You could bring, you could submit your piece in advance and a professional would have uh, painted on top of it and talked to you in person to show you what you did wrong and things you can do to improve your painting and so on and so forth. Um, but I think the biggest thing with all of this is that you hear a lot of professionals sharing their projects sharing their thoughts and ideas or whatever they want to lecture about and then you have the opportunity to of course to to meet them and talk to them and ask questions and you can look at their they can look at your portfolio and they can give you feedback and and uh, you meet a lot of like-minded artists and you all sit and and draw together and inspire each other and talk about did you hear what Craig Mullins said yesterday, oh my god, how is this so good? <laughs> so forth and so on. Hey, Ghetto Legend, how's it going? Fuchsia, oh yeah, that's nice, yeah. My, my, my salute to my son. What I mean why, why you need to go to one of these uh, workshops is the realization of what, where you sit, where you sit. Of course, um, at any workshop, you're going to be exposed to, uh, what's it called, um, imposter syndrome. <laughs> you're going to go home and go, holy, I know nothing right <laughs> that you're just going to cry in a corner for a few days and then you're going to you, but you're going to you're gonna, not going to be able to keep yourself from creating because you're going to be so pumped of what you experienced of what you saw and all the cool things you you uh, was it you were exposed to and all these things right so it's it's like a major boost and especially after the lectures of um, the instructors because they, you know, they create uh, a presentation uh, of, you know, skilled artists like that can can really boost something. When you see, I remember like one of those first workshops I went to, and I was exposed to um, um, Justin Kaufman. If you don't know, his, his his nickname is El Coro, but he's Justin Kaufman. He had this uh, tomes, like piles of, of acrylic and color pencil sketchbooks that every page was like you, you went to a museum and you're like, how have you drawn this? I have no idea how you got to this point. And you just sit there and go like, you have book after book with this. To hit life. Like, and, and at that time, it was so like impossible to to fathom how can you create not only one but books of this right and uh, and it's it's this kind of realization of where you can get when you up your game and much like um, Unreal Bjornament competitions it is a very similar way of you forcing yourself to step up realizing that it's not okay to just half as it to kind of have something to post but you're actually having to to implement all your skill set in order for you not to be slayed by your opponent 
and and that that itself forces you to to perform at an absolutely different level so for me it's like going to these workshops it's mandatory at least once to get that cold shower <laughs> to get that exposure of everybody else who's there and who everybody else who who has this passion and they're working like so hard to get somewhere right much like you and it's for me it is really it was and it always is massively boosting in 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 a, um inspiration but the the longer you are in the industry the l less magic it is right it's that whole classic saying you know of like um the magic is lost when you know the trick right when you see a magician it's like wow that's how wow skill everything in one neat package but then you know all the little moves and you're like okay right that was a I'm impressed by the skills that you did to make that ma uh, magic happen. I can see the steps. I can't do them as good. But then you go like, but I know what you're doing. <laughs> I've done that myself. I can also do that trick. You know, it's not that amazing anymore. So that's what a little bit jaded. The, the more experience you get is that you, you, you are not that impressed by it all anymore. Uh, but what's what what you get when you are an experienced artist in the industry is is you get the you get the, these stark reminders about skill levels again and how how good everyone is and how they are pushing their trade and how they trying to master their abilities and, and that for me is always like a reminder of uh, I need to stay true to me. So er, earlier in my career, when I went to these workshops, it was like, I need to really get better. <laughs> I need to really, and you know, get good at what I want to do. And, uh, and one of the lessons I learned from going to workshops is, is um, I need to find what I love to do because I remember like those days when you went to these workshops and you were exposed to these beasts and uh, and they all had their own speciality like oh I'm the environment guy I draw monsters I use acrylics or whatever whatever and and uh, and I realized like okay I, I gotta be I gotta find my thing and luckily, my, my my thing that I found was is quite uh, was quite uh, I found it quite fast. But uh, it was hard to find a place in the industry for it at the time. Um, so I had to learn all the standard like production stuff and illustrations and things. But nowadays, what I love doing is starting to become standard like pre-production IP development yeah El Coro is really really good Gria, yeah, absolutely. Like going in workshops, like for ju judo as well. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. I went to that. It's, it's this exposure of a completely different skill level that makes you rationalize internally, makes you rationalize uh, your your knowledge and skill set, and it and it just become it becomes like manifested. <laughs> The whole idea of what you're doing and trying becomes real somehow. For me, at least, it was like it didn't exist 
until I was exposed to to those really really good artists and meeting them and talking to them and understanding where they're coming from and understanding what you know their mentality and 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 just meeting someone that's down the line right at, at in this in the early 2000s no one was in Sweden down the line you know it was all like this magical thing this this little niche club of people that are mostly are illustrators and uh, they just man happen to be in games right and it wasn't really that evolved compared to now. Now it's a big business, not well-known Hollywood-type aspects. But back then it wasn't. So now it's a completely different uh, level, and it's a lot more manif like um, the industry is a lot more settled in terms of quality. The threshold is higher so seeing people that are have climbed and helped and is navigating the industry at this level you have to meet them you have to understand what is required and that's why I'm saying it's so important to go to these workshops because you'll go away just bubbling of of, of possibilities <laughs> Fuxi, yeah, you, you you had a cold shower in in uh, IFCC, and oh, that's good. I still remember the days of I think my second workshop. We were all sitting in the hostel, like a big hostel room, maybe thirty people, all sitting, just drawing, drinking, talking, drawing, looking over the shoulder, like, "What are you?" Oh shit! All right, <laughs> I gotta draw better, and it was just. I filled a sketchbook in this two, two, three days. So I'm assuming that kind of happens nowadays as well. Uh, but it's you know, it's crazy times, and it's I love the feeling of of inspiration, sitting on the airplane going home, and and you try to kind of rationalize what you went through, and how am I going to proceed now? How am I ever going to like reach those levels that you were exposed to, and what where am I in this ladder? Where what am I as an artist? And you just go, and you have to start rationalizing and, and figuring out yourself. And what is, okay, one of the things that I went home instantly thinking, okay, what is my next masterpiece? <laughs> In that sense of, all right, I got to start implementing my knowledge. I have to start showing people what I can do, right? That was always one of the things I got home uh, and and was thinking about was it like okay how can I implement my skill set to show people what I can do because I to some degree you always know what you, yourself you can do you trust your abilities but it's the the whole idea of like I've talked about this many times before but this idea about um, showing a random random Joe on internet what you actually can do and that's one of the things you learn from these workshops is that you have to spend time in pre working on presentation you have to spend time working on portfolio in a way where anyone can look at it and anyone can understand where you're coming from what you're doing what you're what you are all about and it's one thing to know it yourself which is step one but then you also have to learn step two which is show everyone else that and that's always what I went home thinking about like okay I need to manifest 
the way everyone these masters or these beasts have done right they've put their skills into pictures and then you can look at the pictures and go i understand you and that's for me was always the thing that was missing uh back then going to these workshops is that i had lots of sketchbooks and a lot of things and i could never understand like where i am in that ladder so i just went home and was very very creative but couldn't really manifest it in that sense of one cohesive picture so why i ended up being doing is working on my ability to create right so in the end what i had to manifest was this broad range of ideas rather than one solid thing and that's i think that's also fascinating thing that you can see so many different people in these industries or workshops to what's possible Captain Boss. <laughs> but you have to also understand, like, you can't be defeatist, right? You can't go throw the pen away and go, I will never be able to do this. The idea of this kind of amount of inspiration is that you have to take it, harness it, and like put it into a goal. Like, because it's, you can easily go, like, let it defeat you this this uh, this far beyond level where you are at or people ability to realize their skills and so on it should has to be ammunition to to grow better where you it can't be ammunition to defeat you it has to be like okay i'll show them i'll next year like that, that's that's always like okay this workshop next year i'm gonna I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that, I'm going to work on this, you know, so that you, you can up your game and then you can show it to someone and they can go like, wow, all right, okay, you know, especially if you show your portfolio to a professional and they talk to you about what you're missing and if you're not taking notes, what they're saying, you might as, not, as well not talk to them because you're not going to forget and you're going to you're going to put these comments aside thinking yeah i know them but you're not going to you're not going to manifest them in the same way as if you write them and see them because one month later when you're home after this rush of inf info you're going to start rationalizing and then you're going to flip the page in your notebook and go oh uh, artist x y and z said this and then you're really like oh yeah that's right that's right those are the things especially if you talk to more than one and they say similar things then you definitely need to pay attention and if you don't write that down um, there is science behind writing thoughts down and and realizing thoughts it's the same same principle but in reverse of memories um, they've, pr they've proven like if you take a photo of a event your brain is going to forget it a lot easier because it knows the information has been saved in a in your device so it's like oh it's a photo of it i don't need to remember it i can just look at the photo that's the, like the basics of the brain but if you don't take a photograph and you you know observe something and, and and you try actively to remember it you're going to have a way stronger memory of it so it's the same with like writing something down if you write it down you're actually thinking about what you're writing you're constructing the words, you're putting it into a fashion where, where you can read it and understand it, and your brain makes a note out of it. And you, you have to rationalize the thought, and you have to manifest the thought. And, and you will remember that a lot better, and even more so when you read it later, you're going to go back to that train of thought, and, and you won't be able to recollect it. Gria, yeah, that's, that's very important. All right, painting done. Let there be light. Holy Jesus. Let's raid someone. Um.
how about we raid good old Joe? So much monsters. Hey, it's me. Time is up. I just, uh, hopefully that was some interesting, um, uh, interesting talk about workshop and not being defeated by other people's skill set. And see you guys tomorrow morning. Um, it kind of got where I wanted in terms of uh, picture, except design-wise, it's a bit clumsy and wishy-washy, but. The sketching technique pays off, I think, with overlay. It's fun. I didn't do that much overlay because of the picture um, and construction of the picture, but uh, I want to keep exploring. I think it's fun. Uh, we're going to raid Joe. Have a great day. Good night if you're that part of the world. See you tomorrow morning for some more of this. <laughs> Have a good one.